Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I have a classic dessert recipe for you guys and I want to show you how to make a traditional pavlova topped with my homemade lemon curd, whipped cream, and loads of berries. This incredible dessert is just a dream. It's so light and fluffy and it's perfect for spring and summertime occasions. So the pavlova is made out of meringue and it bakes slowly in the oven so the outside is nice and crispy and then the inside just has that gooey kind of meringue texture and then combine it with my zesty homemade lemon curd, a little bit of whipped cream, and you are in dessert heaven. Let me show you how to make this incredible dessert. And I'm going to get the pavlova started with the eggs. So today you're going to need six large eggs. I've brought these up to room temperature and we need to separate the egg yolks from the egg whites. I'm going to drop the egg whites into a separate measuring cup. And I actually like to save the egg yolks for my homemade lemon curd. I have a separate video recipe for the lemon curd. I'll include it down in the video description box below, but it's a perfect way to use up those extra egg yolks. Oops. I'm going to add my egg whites into my stand mixer bowl and add one tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And one of the most crucial things about making a pavlova is starting with a squeaky clean mixing bowl. You want to make sure that it doesn't have any residual grease from a previous recipe. What I like to do is actually rinse it out with white vinegar and then wash it down with a degreasing soap, pat it dry so there's no grease left over. If you do have any grease in there, what's going to happen is the egg whites are going to deflate and they're not going to whisk up nicely and they're not going to reach that stiff peak stage. And now let's talk about the sugar. Today we're going to need two cups of ultra fine baker's sugar. This is the exact sugar I'm using today. I bought it at Safeway. I'm also going to include an Amazon link down in the video description box below. And this is the best sugar because the granules will easily dissolve in the egg whites. I'm going to also mix into the sugar a tablespoon of cornstarch and a teaspoon of cream of tartar. So the cornstarch and the cream of tartar are going to help stabilize the egg whites. So they stay nice and fluffy. I'm just going to mix in the two into the sugar. And I forgot to mention earlier that I'm also preheating my oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And now let's talk about adding the sugar. So when making a pavlova, you want to add the sugar in a slow and steady stream, about a tablespoon at a time. And this process is going to take you about eight to 10 minutes, but that's the key to making a perfect pavlova. You want to add the sugar slowly so it dissolves and incorporates into the egg whites. And that's what, another reason why we're using ultra fine sugar instead of granulated sugar, because when you add uh, regular granulated sugar, the granules are too big and it takes takes too long for them to dissolve and then no matter how long you mix it for, I, I recipe tested a couple times and you can mix it for like 40 minutes and the sugar granules are still there. So the ultra fine sugar makes this process go really smoothly. So let's turn this mixer on. I'm going to set it to a nice medium speed. You don't want to do this on a high speed. All right, grab a tablespoon of the sugar and just pour it in like that. It's a super slow process. And once I have all of my sugar added, I'm going to pick up the speed just a notch to a medium high and continue whisking the meringue until stiff peaks form. That could take anywhere from five to eight minutes. And I want to show you guys what this meringue looks like when it's all done. Check out those stiff peaks. It's extra light and fluffy and it holds its shape really, really well. And I love making meringue because it's so light and fluffy and creamy. This is going to taste so fantastic. Just going to knock all the meringue off of my whisk. I've lined a baking sheet with some parchment paper and then on the back of the paper, I actually traced an eight inch circle and I'm just going to use it as a guide, an approximate guide for my pavlova. I'm going to grab my spatula and drop this beautiful meringue onto the baking sheet. I'm going to dab a little bit of meringue underneath just to keep the parchment paper from sliding around. And I'm going to start shaping my pavlova with a spoon. I want to create a nice round even circle. I like to make a little, a little bit of a well in the center for the lemon curd and the whipped cream. 
Then I'll take an offset spatula and just go around the edges and kind of curve that meringue up and over the, over the top. And this next step is optional, but I like to garnish my pavlova with little meringue kisses on the top. So I transferred about a cup of my meringue into a pastry bag. And today I am using uh, Teco tip number 847. And I'm going to pipe little meringue dollops onto my parchment paper. And my pavlova is ready for the oven. It's going to bake at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for one and a half hours. And then I'm going to turn off the oven and let it cool completely in there for about two to three hours. You wanna make sure that you're not opening your oven at any time during this entire process. It needs to bake and cool down slowly. Now the pavlova is naturally going to have a couple cracks and then the center is going to just sink in a little bit and that's totally fine. If you want your pavlovas to be more perfect, you can use the same recipe and make mini pavlovas like three or four inches in diameter. I'm going to include those instructions up on my website online. So make sure to check that out. Meanwhile, let's get this in the oven. And now let's make some simple whipped cream to go with our dessert. So I have one cup of heavy cream that's nicely chilled. I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and half a cup of confectioner sugar. Drop that in. And I'm just going to use my hand mixer to whisk this together for three to four minutes until stiff peaks form. And now let's see what the pavlova looks like when it's all done. Now I did cheat and make this one yesterday. The one I've just mixed is still baking in the oven, but doesn't this look gorgeous? It's like a big fluffy cloud on the cake platter. Let's take a closer look so you guys can see what it looks like when it's all done close up. And I want you guys to see close up how there's some natural little cracks in here. And that's just how a large pavlova will bake. You'll just have some cracking on the side. And then the center is just slightly sunken in because that meringue is a little bit softer underneath than the outside is. Now let's assemble it. And you don't want to load up the pavlova with too much heavy fillings. That's why the whipped cream is such a perfect option. I'm just going to drop little spoonfuls of that on top. Next, I'm going to add some of my homemade lemon curd on top. Just going to drop little spoonfuls. And this zesty, lemony lemon curd is going to be the perfect complement because the pavlova, let's be honest, is a little bit on the sweet side. So this lemon curd is really going to help break up some of that sweetness. It's going to be so delicious. And let's bring in some berries to garnish the top. I have some diced strawberries and raspberries today, but really you can add just about any type of fruit on top. You can add blackberries, blueberries, kiwis, bananas if you like them. It's gonna be fantastic. And then garnish with some fresh mint leaves on top. Doesn't this look gorgeous? This is such a stunning dessert for any occasion. And then for a really fun finish, add a couple of those meringue kisses on top as well. How cute do these look? And now it's time to cut into this stunning pavlova and enjoy it. Now there's really no easy way to cut one of these. It is going to break. One of the easier things to do is maybe to follow the crack lines here. Cut all the way through. Make sure you're cutting the bottom as well. Look at this cloud of incredible goodness. This is going to be so fantastic. And I wanted you guys to see what it looks like on the inside because you have this crunchy meringue shell on the outside, but on the inside, the meringue is still really light, a little bit wet on the inside, very light and fluffy. And that's it for my classic pavlova recipe. How stunning is this dessert? I love that lemon curd, the berries, the mint leaves, the little meringue kisses on top. It just makes this dessert extra special. It's gonna be so perfect for spring and summertime occasions. For all the ingredients and the recipe link, head on down the video description box. I've got everything down there for you guys, including the recipe with metric measurements. And now let's dig in to enjoy. And this looks so good. You can add extra lemon curd on the side if you want. I'm gonna grab some of this crunchy meringue along with some of that soft and ooey gooey meringue from the inside. 
some berries. Oh, and I need to find some whipped cream. There it is. This looks so good. Mmm. Wow. This is just something else. This is this is beyond incredible. So so good. Going in for another bite. Mmm. Mm-hmm. This pavlova is just beyond amazing. So, so incredible. It's like the most heavenly dessert you could think of. It's so light and fluffy on the inside. That meringue is so delicate. And then you get that crunchy meringue on the outside. The whipped cream and that lemon curd is key. It really balances out the sweetness because pavlovas are usually really, really sweet. You have a lot of sugar in the meringue and then you have a sugary whipped cream but the fruit and the lemon curd just cut through that sweetness and it balances out and makes it the most perfect dessert you could possibly want. This is so incredibly delicious and it's so easy to eat as well. Just incredible. I love the little bits of the strawberries and the raspberries in there as well. So good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this recipe at home. And of course, if you do make it, you can always share with me on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Thank you, and I'll see you next time with a new recipe.